I'm in the new Hyundai Venue. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are and when you are watching this, welcome to a new vlog. Some of you might be noticing that I am in a different car, but that's a dumb question now to think of it because the thumbnail would be pretty obvious, right? Yes, I am in the new Hyundai Venue. If you are not following me on Instagram, the link's here by the way. I've shared a Q&A uh, to ask people or to see what they want to know from this video about the Hyundai Venue. This is the new Venue with the DCT uh, gearbox and 1 litre turbo engine. So it has roughly around 120 horsepower, I guess, and 170 fan m torque. There are tons of videos, by the way, online which cover in-depth first drive impressions and maybe you'll soon get ownership reviews too so no point of me going into the same details again and again we want to address few basic things that people are interested about but before we address those questions I want to give you a brief overview of how the performance is how the ride and handling uh, how the features inside the car are and the seating comfort once we get a nice place to stop by we'll cover the exteriors of the car and that would be the agenda for the day the first impressions that I have when I sat in the car and started driving it is how spacious this car is and the glass house is pretty good with the sunroof so you would feel a lot more airy the window lines are low so you don't feel claustrophobic at least in the front seats uh, rare uh, is the same so this hasn't changed uh, from the previous venue there are few things that have changed internally like the digital driver display steering uh, is changed this is similar to what you get in the Creta I think rear seat comfort is pretty much the same but this time we get reclining seats so that's additional to the previous generation besides that on a whole it's a really well made cabin with good build quality everything feels good here uh, the uh, hand rest here seems to be slightly on the shorter side so when you're driving you can't rest your uh, elbows here on the right side I can easily rest my arm while holding the steering you don't get ventilated seats even on the highest end model I think that's a miss anyway those are the first impressions of what you feel when you sit inside the car and start driving and talking about driving this car has driving modes now so you have normal eco and sport that's another thing that's changed to the previous generation i've been driving in uh, normal mode for the last six to seven kilometers and i'm getting a range of around 10 to 10.5 kilometers per liter which is decent the average speed's probably around 25 to 30 kilometers per hour and in peak bumper to bumper traffic expect mileage anywhere around eight it can go up after the first service typically that's what happens with uh, hyundai cars i think normal mode would be the best compromise in the city in terms of performance and fuel efficiency because i've been driving in eco mode for the last few kilometers and there is decent power for this category but it's just that there is a lot of turbo lag so you won't get that quick uh, burst of power that you need when you're overtaking the mileage is shocking here 16 kilometers per liter approximately but keep in mind that the stretch was empty so in peak traffic I would expect anywhere between 11 to 13 kilometers per liter uh, realistically still which is pretty good I don't know if you can hear this in the background but I've kept the AC at 24 in automatic and still you can hear how loud the blower is now that we are at a signal let me cover about some of the features inside the car this comes with an air purifier now drive modes as I mentioned earlier two USB USB A USB C charging ports here wireless charging two USB uh, C ports at the back similar storage like before but uh, cooled glove boxes uh, sunroof I'll cover rear seat leg room and comfort and also design when I stop at a location for now I'm just waiting for this signal to turn green to show you how the performance or the sport mode feels man this has good power and you have paddle shifters that's also new with this new generation very engaging although sound uh, wise not a big fan of the sound I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a BMW but so I, I'm not even comparing it but it's just that this doesn't sound fun enough for a petrol uh, turbo but to drive man I'm in these twisty sections and this is Fun, yeah. The handling of this car is pretty good for a small micro 
compact SUV, whatever you call it. The ride is on the stiffer side slightly. I mean, this compares to Nexon in its class and Nexon is more comfortable. Even I think uh, XUV300 is more comfortable in terms of the ride. Like, you, whenever you go on those speed strips, you can notice the ride quality. But on a whole, that sport mode is fun, yeah. I think the i20 N-Line exhaust note would sound good in this car. Whenever they bring a venue end line, that would be amazing. The steering is too light for my liking, but that's a normal characteristic with all Hyundai's. They do it intentionally because in city they want it to be easy to maneuver. But fun, yeah, so much fun. I'm doing it in manual, in sports mode. You can put it in manual and shift the uh, gear lever or use the paddle shifters to have a more engaging drive. But I'm using paddle shifters and this is a fun car. Hardly any body roll here. So after pushing the car a bit in sports mode, the mileage I was getting is 8. I think if you drive it a little bit more cautiously, even in sports mode, you can get around 9 kilometers per liter, which is pretty good for 120 horses. can do 0 to 100 in pretty good speeds probably around 11 seconds I guess I don't have a fancy equipment to test it but that's a, just the estimate from the acceleration that I got Chalo. time to go check out the exterior design of the car and also see how the rear seat comfort is when I first saw this car in the morning when they got it I was like super impressed here this angle especially looks very good it looks more mature and grown up now i think this color of chrome is really good it has a slight uh, bronze or gold into it these black dot portions are done well although we don't get leds here these are regular old bulbs but here we have led projectors this is the drl as you can see from the badging here there's a dct and turbo petrol one liter turbo petrol and that's how the car looks from the rear i like the rear portion a lot now these three light elements trying to have a design theme with the three light uh, light slots here they look unique and this is a connected light so this entire thing lights up uh, in the night time kind of designed like a hedge that's how the car looks from the outside uh, minor changes but good changes ah mind the sweat if i turn the ac you'd hear a lot of uh, blur noise so i don't want you to be disturbed by that but on a whole the rear seat comfort is pretty good here one of the top three in the category i think this and nexon are pretty close but the legroom you get here is better than the nexon but under thigh support is not the greatest they don't scoop up like you get in nexon so your only way out is to stretch your legs and then rest your feet but that's okay this is a minor niggle nothing major headroom is pretty decent similar to the previous generation but what this generation gets is reclining seats even though the under thigh support is less, you can relax and stretch your legs and also recline at the back. So this gives you that much more comfortable and relaxing feel while you're at the rear seat. And these get 60-40 split, so you can load more. I think if you can access the boot space from here, and that's a decent boot space. I think we're done here at the back. So let's get back on the road. While we are here in traffic, let me answer some of the questions on Instagram. What's the mileage of the car that's covered in the video? Why do they remove the cornering lights? It's very useful, I know. Fog lights, even on the next one, the fog lights act as cornering lamps. That should have been there, but I guess cost cutting. Shri Satvik Kondoju, why so pricey should Hyundai has to launch this car at aggressive price point? Why Hyundai is doing this? I mean, I can't talk on behalf of Hyundai, but what I can see from my experience is everything is going up in price. It can be due to inflation, more macroeconomic factors than we probably don't understand. But that's what we have, like, can't help with it. So instead of worrying about it, figure out how you can earn more and also figure out how you can finance it better. Small request, very few instances have been spoken as 1.2 liter natural aspirated engine, I guess. There's a turbo. Are these cars 1.2 liter engine? We'll get to test drive it later uh, in this video. So maybe I can cover uh, how that feels. But uh, if I'm in the market, if I'm if focused into driving, I would definitely pick the uh, one liter turbo. Uh, I think you get a bit of both worlds, fuel efficiency and performance. Whereas 1.2 liter naturally aspirated is just a very calm, 
much more practical less costly obviously and less in terms of maintenance too because with turbo with dct gearbox assets you need to maintain it really well kumar sinuas can it seat three people at the back oh two and a half no cars currently are three seater cars here two two and a half max but you can sit comfortably in the back seat that's what i can say any changes in driving experience from the previous generation from my memory of driving uh, altias when you not so much the ride and handling is pretty similar although the ride is slightly on the stiffer side but there's a new car that's a uh, i think 10 20000 km car so it changes revant yandapalli what is your impression of design pretty good i think this looks more matured and grown up and i i like this character of a car than the previous venue man a lot of questions about ventilated seats i think people are starting to uh, use it a lot when you are next on which one is best value for money mm, next on because the pricing Ah, uh, even Nexon's pricing around 15 now. Venue might be a better option because uh, the in uh, instrument infotainment screen is bigger, and also uh, this has more features than the Nexon. Chalo, those are the few questions that uh, I could answer. I will answer a few more on Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, definitely here is the link. It's easier and faster to connect with uh, all the subscribers. I think the drive is done. Thoroughly enjoyed the car. Would rate it uh, eight out of ten, eight to eight point four out of ten because highway driving is something I didn't do. If I get that for a longer duration, maybe I can test it for a longer term and then uh, give a final rating. But as of now, it's around eight to eight point five. Really enjoyed the car. And it's a featured pack car. This has connected tech too, so that you can start your car from the comfort of your home using Alexa and have the car cooled. before you start your journey is it worth 15 lakhs for the features it packs and the practicality and uh, economy of hyundai and the low cost uh, running that you get with hyundai cars i'm sure it's definitely worth it go check it out at your nearest uh, fusion hyundai showroom or any other hyundai showrooms i'm sure you'd enjoy the drive in this car i love this color though first time i'm enjoying a white color